Hexamethylene tetramine, or hexamine, is an interesting chemical with some pretty cool properties. Historically, it's been used as an emergency fire starter as it burns very clean, producing no smoke, and has an extremely high energy density. It's also been used as a preservative in food, as well as a medication to treat urinary tract infections, and it's the primary component in RDX, which is used to make C4. What I find the most fascinating about hexamine, though, is its structure, with the molecule itself being composed of three heterocyclic rings that are fused, and it kind of looks like a weird tetrahedron. Synthesizing hexamine yourself is actually pretty easy, and all you have to do is mix together ammonia and formaldehyde. In my case here, I used about 30 milliliters of a 37% formaldehyde solution and then added a large excess of ammonium hydroxide. Now I didn't actually measure the volume of ammonia I added because I made this ammonia myself and I haven't titrated it yet to figure out how strong it is. With that in mind, the way that I determined that my ammonia was in excess was to just keep adding it until I could smell the ammonia at a distance without having to waft it or directly smell my beaker. If you can smell ammonia, it means that all of the formaldehyde has been reacted, which is important for two reasons. The first reason is that using an excess of ammonia seems to stabilize the formation of the product hexamine. The second is that formaldehyde is toxic and carcinogenic, and you want to make sure that it's completely gone. This reaction is also very exothermic, and at my small scale it didn't really generate much heat, but I imagine at very large scales it could be dangerous. Anyway, now that the reaction is complete, the next step is to boil away all this excess water. Water is a major product of this reaction, but most of the water here comes from the fact that both formaldehyde and ammonia are gases, and for this reaction, I used solutions of those gases. With that said, it's going to need to boil for a while, and while it does, I want to talk about the reaction mechanism here. Now the net reaction here is four ammonia molecules and six formaldehyde molecules forming one hexamine molecule and six molecules of water. However, this reaction obviously doesn't take place in one step, and the formation of hexamine is actually a series of different rearrangements. As the reaction proceeds, additional molecules of formaldehyde and ammonia are tacked onto the ever-growing structure in a mechanism that, as far as I understand it, nobody really fully understands. Throughout the research I did on this project, I saw over a dozen intermediates and several different ways those intermediates could react, and I really don't know how this one works. If someone watching this happens to know how it does work, feel free to leave a comment, because I'd like to know. Anyway, I go ahead and boil this stuff until hexamine crystals start to crash out, and then I load it into an oven and dry it out the rest of the way. This is my final product, and you can actually see that I burned it a little bit on accident. As a quick demo, I'm going to ignite some of this hexamine so that you can see how it really does burn without producing any smoke whatsoever. Keep in mind, however, that it does produce invisible fumes that are toxic, so it's not completely safe. As you'll see in a moment, the heat produced by this burning actually destroyed my watch glass, but I think that has less to do with this burning really hot and more to do with the fact that it was a pretty cheap watch glass. In any case, that's the entire process. I hope you found this interesting, and if you'd like to see more content like this, consider following me on TikTok or YouTube or becoming a patron. And on that note, I want to take a moment to sincerely thank my patrons whose financial contributions are absolutely vital to keeping me doing the work that I'm doing. You guys just keep being awesome, and I'll see you next time.